we're so far off the scales for um, toxicity in aluminum that um, it, it appears to be affecting the, the flora uh, greatly. Our grass is mm -hmm. about a third its height that it was only a few years ago. A 35-year forestry biologist um, has done 50 pH tests, the, the rain, across the board, every single test was 10 times or more, more alkaline than it should be. Uh, cataclysmic happened all of As I look into the ancient sky. Um, uh, over 40 years I've been flying. I stopped counting my hours at 3,500 hours which is a fair amount. I've owned seven airplanes in my life. I have ratings all the way up to uh, twin IFR. I, I am not jet rated, but, you know, everything else. But today, Clifford, when, when all of a sudden you, you see these trails in the sky in the morning when you wake up, and by late morning, early afternoon, the sky is totally overcast. It is not natural. The government and, and other people say, oh, well, that's, that's a contrail, condensation, contrail, that, that all planes do at a certain altitude. And I said, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, there are contrails. Go back to World War II, we had contrails. But they didn't last. This, it, it, this was, you know, in those days, it was condensation of moisture. And then it dissipates after... I don't know, maybe maybe depending on the altitude, maybe a minute. Maybe a little over a minute, but around a minute, and, and, and it's gone. These things last all day long, unless there's a strong wind and it blows out of the way. Now it's gotten so bad, and I talk to people, as you know, all over the world, and it's happening almost every country that I'm aware of in the world. We have listeners in at least 50 countries that we know of. And, and people are always reporting back. Um, they have a lot of respiratory problems. They never had that before. People are having a lot of sinus problems. They've never had that before. It is acknowledged in December of 1999 that citizen concern is focused on whether or not aircraft may be involved in operations that release chemical or biological substances. The EPA responds that they are, quote, unaware, unquote, of any such applications by such aircraft. In January of 2000, a certified letter including a physical sample of highly unusual airborne fibrous material is sent to Carol M. Browner with a request for identification of the material on behalf of the public environmental and health interest. They are, quote, unaware, unquote of any programs to disperse materials into the atmosphere using aircraft. A series of more than 1,000 petition letters of concern was sent to Carol Browner as an indication of significant citizen concern on the aerosol issue. The EPA responded once again in December of 2000 that they continue to remain, quote, unaware, unquote, of any aerial application of chemical or biological substances that may have an adverse effect upon the population. And this research represents a substantial body of information that may be helpful in interpreting the designs and motivations behind the aerosol operations. Essentially, the method is one of reverse engineering for a global covert operation, and there is no limit to the work that remains to be done. These findings conducted for more than five years are offered to the public these studies begin with an examination of contrails themselves, a very common and ordinary phenomenon involving the freezing of water vapor into ice and their subsequent dissipation through evaporation and mixing. As I've never seen anything like this before, as it continued all day long. And the result was, within a couple hours, the entire sky was totally blotted out with this messy white haze I started documenting after I discovered that nobody was paying attention and that even people who would look up and acknowledge that they see the same thing, they weren't at all concerned about it. There were no laws of physics that supported this activity or the explanation of this activity as a normal water vapor or frozen.